I would like to welcome you on today's uh, networking meeting. I'm very pleased that you are attending uh, this meeting. And before we officially start, I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Agnieszka Pan, uh, who will explain uh, on how to use this platform. Thank you and enjoy the meeting. Welcome everybody on uh, our visual district call. Uh, I hope that I know that some of you have been here before, so this is not your first experience, but I will briefly uh, say a few things about the platform, just in case if you don't remember uh, what, what's going on here. So firstly, what's important is to set up your profile by adding your first name and last name. I will maybe share my screen so you will see where you can change your profile. So it is here. You can just change your profile and you can edit profile. You can even add your picture if you like. You can add the company name, job title. You can link it with LinkedIn, Facebook, or your website. And please remember to save changes. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Something, uh, I had some malfunction today with my laptop. So you, you have seen the change of my profile, right? Okay, so another section is on the right side, maybe I will share my screen again. You'll have here um, like a message icon. You can click on it and you will see all the participants of the event and you can basically chat with a, a participant. You can even, or you can chat here on a general chat. So if you'd like to, you can write a message. And only uh, speakers on the stage can turn on their microphone and camera or share the screen. So if you have any questions, please go to the Q&A section. You can just enter your question here. And also, you can vote for the question if it's really important to, to participants. So that's, that's the first thing. And then we will move to the networking session. And here, everybody can basically turn on the microphone and camera freely. You can also chat within the table or on a general chat. You can share your screen here, or you can even use your whiteboard. And if you like to move between the tables, you can just click, double click on a table and you can just move around like that. And if you have any questions, you can write to me privately, basically. I'm Agnieszka Fan. So you can just by find you can just find this way um, my name. And also uh, we have a table on a networking session that's dedicated for any problems. And also if you go here to the need help section, uh, you can also see if you have some problems with, let's say, microphone or camera, there's also um, some brief information that can help you if I will not be able to, to answer the question immediately. So that's pretty much it. So enjoy your meeting today and uh, wish you a great day. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy here to connect today with you on this uh, unfortunately cloudy day and uh, the weather is not spoiling us but i hope that the uh, polish christmas atmosphere brings us in the good mood and gives us the great the great positive vibe for this meeting uh, similar to the previous years the board decided again to award uh, some uh, bbc members for the what they did uh, here actively on the market to promote belgian polish business relationships and this year, they had to describe what they were doing in the following three areas. The one was corporate social responsibility, uh, sustainable development, and the third one, creating value for Belgian business in Poland. As you for sure know, uh, the winners were already chosen. They were also announced on the website and also to the media. And uh, let me go over them again. So for the Platinum Gold winner, we have CFA Polska. For silver winner VGD Polska and amber winner Stocznia Cezarska. Let me also again congratulate the three winners uh, for their award 2020. 
Before, I will give the platform to them where they will have a more extensive presentation on what they really did here on the market. I will go over the other 10 companies who were participating and also describe in a couple of sentences what they uh, did specially uh, this year on these three in these three areas, uh, CSR, SD, and also creating value. The first one is ABC Vietje. Uh, Amber member of the Belgian Business Chamber and uh, with difficult time for them uh, due to the COVID-19, like many companies, they have managed to organize placement in companies in Poland for French students and created a new brand called La Nuit, fashionate clothes for women where production is based in Poland and all materials are high quality and also uh, in a sustainable way uh, uh, produced because with less water, using less water. The second one is Advicero Nexia, also an Amber member, and they were actively uh, focusing especially to the Nexia days 2019, where employees spent the day cleaning Warsaw's rivers and water reservoirs. They also created a special Christmas card for sale and allocated whole funded money to the many foundations. The third nominee was Stratokit SA, Amber member, and they mostly focused on synchronizing software services to reduce and automate their team's workload. They focused also on finding a work-life balance amongst their employees. Matexi, another of the participants to the election, a silver member of Belgian Business Chamber, and as a developer, they implemented a lot of environmental solutions for the buildings like bird nesting boxes, and they also support organizations uh, through the flagship project, Developer of Chances, We Build a Future for Children. Materialize is another silver member, and they were actively working in CSR and sustainable development since 2012 already, with a main focus in 2020 to convert the headquarters to 100% green electricity, with the objective to roll it out also internationally. POC Partners, silver member, activity focused on Darlovo Volunteer Center, where every year they contribute 60,000 slots for various types of activities focused on people, social activity and integration, and sponsor some of small, uh, smaller events. Immobile Group, another silver member. Immobile Group impressed us by development project on Granary Island. It's a new residential building built with the preservation of the remains of the historical granaries. Gelamco, gold member, and Gelamco implemented some CSR solutions in building uh, very prestigious projects in Warsaw like Platz Europejski, investing in art projects, art in the city foundation, and revitalization of old buildings like the 19th century building on Foxhall 1315, which required engaging top specialists from both countries, both Belgian and Polish, Poland. Democo Poland, gold member, they built a technical school in Tarnovo Podgorne, where 70% of the annual consumption will be generated from 85 solar panels installed on the roof of the building. For collaboration with the municipality of Gmina Tarnovo Podgorne and for the solidity of the investment, they have received an award, Tarnowski Lu. Last one is BNP Paribas, platinum member. BNP uh, takes many actions around CSR and SD, and the main company activity that caught our attention is the fact that in 2019, the consumption of diesel per FTE was reduced in 2000, 30% compared to 2018. So this was for all the participants who unfortunately were not a winner this year, but anyway, we would like to thank them for participating, and we would also like to thank them for the efforts in these areas. And now, very shortly, I will uh, give the platform to uh, the three winners and they will give a presentation on what they exactly did and how uh, they uh, promoted their activities and how they, act they were actively active, active participating. But before that, I would like to say that after the presentations, there will be a panel discussion with the winners. And after that, we will also uh, have a draw with some prizes. And uh, that will happen then after the panel discussion. After that, again, you will have the chance to network and everybody will contribute, hopefully, to this event in an active way and you will connect with other people. So the first person I would like now to, uh, to ask for the stage is Malgojata Boron from CFA, and she will give the first pres uh, presentation on her company. So Malgojata, the 
the floor is all yours. Good afternoon, all of you. Uh, I will share the screen. You can see. It's okay, you can see. Mike might, might, might be a little bit louder, I think, to hear you better. Bigger or louder? Louder, louder. louder okay. If possible. Cool. Or closer Maybe. to the mic. To, I will uh... go closer to the mic. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Okay, so you already, already introduced me. Uh, my name, whole name is Małgorzata Boron Sinkovic, and I'm working in CFI already 20 years and just i passed this, uh, this anniversary and few years already i'm um, regional director and i have also honor to be the ambassador of sustainability in cfe group so my role with other ambassador was to uh, establish strategy and then to adopt um, uh, to adopt in our local market. Okay, I go maybe here because otherwise I cannot. You still see the presentation? Yeah, it's it's right. Okay, so. Um, I will go for another slide. So, as you know, CFE Company is a general contractor, and our core business is to build project for our clients. On the right side, you have you can see few cl clients with whom we are cooperating. Um, we would like to cooperate um, in the professional way and the sustainable way. So the people. Uh, for us are the main value. Um, our operational directors are responsible from A to Z um, for the project, and they are supported by foundation in the several department. As I mentioned before, we would like to work in the professional and sustainable way, and that's why, uh, and we would like to Keep it simple. That's why a few years uh, ago it was, um, um, let's say, invented the uh, new logo. Together, week is better. And it was a little bit controversial, but also catchy. Uh, what does it mean? Um, but together, it's mean, but we, it's very important for us partnership. We uh, as I mentioned, the people, the, it's the key value. Keys, we mean this keep it simple and standardized and then better continuously improvement. So we thought that it's very catching. We have to also find in our sustainability uh, easy uh, logo, which uh, it will be readable for everybody. So we are focused for sustainable business, uh, long-term view with a social and environmental impact. We believe in importance and it's, it's also important to our investor. For optimum effectiveness, we have also built our strategy around the strong and easy to understand belief. So together we go green. Each word is weight and underlines and different notion. No, so I will go maybe more closer. So together, this partnership for change, we as uh, we are working in our strategy about all sustainable goals around the people like uh, health and safety. Let's say go, in other words, it's, uh, it's mean go for action, for fast solution, like uh, all systematic innovation solution and green, uh, everything what is uh, around environmental sustainability goals. Uh, as 
uh, I said before, uh, like uh, as an ambassador of uh, sustainability, I was present on many uh, workshop and uh, in, in Belgium or then after uh, only um, online. But we were busy to invent this, this matrix, uh, which presented what is uh, important uh, to us. But then to transfer locally, it's a little bit difficult. So uh, we implemented the kind of communication internal and external via fishes, uh, via these flashboards. And inter internally, uh, we inform our people via Slack or external via LinkedIn, what, uh, where we are busy. So we started uh, from, let's say, charity, and we uh, donate with uh, Plopsa, it's also from Belgium, you should know this uh, momentum, uh, computers to the school and uh, other uh, multimedia boards and printers. Uh, because we know how important it is to allow equal access to education uh, for students. Then another action which we would like to share, uh, I would like to show with you, it's very important for students. It's 15 call on the 70 uh, United schools. So we have uh, on roof in our uh, office in Warsaw, it's office this Green Wings, we have a B. So already we can have a holiday this year. And it, I think, would be the price. <laughs> uh, then we, we built awareness about the um, uh, plastic bottle. And we already invented before uh, we started with the sustainability action. Uh, but we will not buy any more uh, plastic bottle to the office. But we are using uh, this filter uh, tap water. Uh, then, of course, it's important for us good health and well-being. So we started with education for the youngest, uh, that they would have the good physical condition. And we know that can give big impact on human health. So I think we are pretty uh, sportive uh, group in CV company. As we are general contractor, we uh, take care about the safety. This is the priority. All the meetings are started with the health and safety. So we are organizing uh, this kind of training uh, bef before, of course, COVID. This is the picture when you can really act uh, on this uh, week. It's the training. And also we invented, introduced the Carolina safety system. This is an application which we are using every day. And uh, because of this, that you can use this in telephone, um, it's very easy to improve our control and all employees uh, are informed, informed immediately. So it's it's very good tool invented by us in CV Polska. Uh, I, I, and other things which we did and we could share, and this is a little bit like a partnership uh, goal and this uh, um, about the city. Um, it, we reached the uh, certificate in lead gold in Gdańsk for the river view together with our clients uh, because we use 10% of materials which were from used by uh, of recycling materials then 75 percent of these materials was recycled and and other points which uh, bring us this uh, lead certificate we also make the the, the kind of fish uh, who learned the people about the awareness of the uh, recycled materials and it's not only on the species but also uh, for for other uh, for, for Slack, for in emails, so we have very active people. So it's not only me as ambassador uh, who is inventing all information or Bruno who is the, the boss, but also other people, uh, they are sharing information uh, with others how to, to make the segregation. Uh, about um, wasting, because it was also one of our goals to reduce waste. We are very busy now 
able to uh, collect all information from each site in each sector and to, to make this measurement. And after this KPI, we can, uh, uh, let's say, uh, improve to go for, for smaller consumption of electricity or, or uh, uh, gas. So then all this information we are collecting in Power BI and we are doing together with uh, CFE in whole our group, this dashboard, which collects information and then gives us the possibility to, to improve. Of course, this, this year uh, we had, it was a little bit special because when we start to meet within the group, we had a lot of objectives and goals, but as uh, we know this pandemic situation, it was a little bit difficult. And based on this um, sustainability report, I would also mention that they, they're uh, very pushing for digitalization and we as a C we were and we are already um, a lot of uh, advanced, so we are uh, using this uh, Carolina, what I mentioned, this APRO plan. I don't know if you, this is the kind of uh, tool who helps the um, client, subcontractor and the general contractor and to inform about the snacks. Uh, this is very nice tool. Then we are using Beam, SharePoint, Power BI, all, everything is in the cloud. So uh, I think this is now very important that we can, uh, between uh, everyone, even without going out, we can be in touch. So we also invented um, every Friday webinars with um, with within the group within the CFE people uh, all knowledge so this is less let's say no cost this is the added value that we are sharing information uh, between us experience uh, and this is online so this is I think very uh, good um, good tool. So I would like to on the end on this slide to mention that we are, uh, let's say, all involved in CFE uh, Polska from the top, from Bruno, who is bicycle every day uh, to work. We are uh, a lot of uh, engineers who are doing this trainings, information, and we, uh, I think this is the success of our strategy, but we are involving people on each ladder level. So thank you. Thank you very much, Marco Jata, for this presentation and for sharing these insights. Uh, let's let's go to the second presentation for uh, VGD. This will be Martina Gibzinska. So welcome to the stage, Martina. And the floor is all yours. Hello, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, we can hear and see you perfectly. Uh, the presentation is not there uh, yet. Yes, I'm going to share my screen. Just a second, please. OK. Can you see my presentation? Yes, perfect. Thanks. OK. So, good afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Martina Gipczynska, and I'm marketing manager of VGD in Poland. It's a great pleasure to share our company experience with you today. Um, before I start, I would like to say what probably needs to be said when starting doing the presentation. So, on behalf of VGD, our managing director and all our employees, I would like to thank for your votes. Uh, we appreciate your support as we've been working on this uh, all year. Um, we put our hearts in this presentation to charm the jury, and uh, I think it went as planned because here we are, the silver winner of BBC Award 2020. Um, but our thanks um, also go to all competitors in the silver category of um, BBC Award. 
uh, it was an honor to, part to uh, compete with such amazing companies. Uh, your presentation were uh, inspiring. We did some homework and I think we can apply some of your ideas at our uh, company. Uh, so now I would like to tell you more about our company. Um, VTD is an accounting company, but we provide services also in payroll, human resources, uh, business advisory or audit. Uh, we have 17 years ex of, ex uh, of experience in Poland and around 40 years of experience in the European market. And it is worth mention that uh, our parent company has its roots in Belgium. But let's get back to our company profile, because uh, as I said, VTD is an accounting company. Uh, and I think um, that it is uncommon for an accounting company to focus their activities on sustainable development. Um, we are kind of different. We want to um, make a revolution, because today I will try to convince you that we are not a usual accounting company. At VDT, we listen to the clock that is ticking down for the earth as layers of plastic are getting thicker every single hour. Layers that are toxic, that impact wildlife and human being, they are simply dangerous. That's why we introduced uh, a sustainable development policy in our company, uh, just to reduce our environmental footprint. So, we changed all light bulbs uh, to LED lights, uh, we sort our waste and we also introduced paperless uh, policy so don't print it if you don't need to. Uh, we issue electronic invoices, most of our documents uh, are moved to the cloud. Uh, also many documents are only in digital form like some tips for uh, new um, clients or for new employees if we hire. In March, we moved to a new office and we started there a sustainable garden. We called it a VDD Zen Garden as it was created as a relaxation zone for employees. Uh, we sold their uh, white flower meadow. Uh, to, uh, it's created for bees because it prevents them from extinction. Uh, as in this way, we provide them with pollen. We also have um, a hotel for beneficial insects. And I can already tell you that it works because we have some gas in there. We don't use synthetic fer fertilizers, no pesticides. Uh, and it's quite interesting because uh, we acquire only, uh, only organic uh, fertilizers from pigeon raisers. And then we ask ourselves, can VGD be more eco-friendly? And of course we could. That's why we installed a rainwater tank. Uh, it's a huge tank that stores uh, 1,300 liters of water. Uh, it helps to reduce water use uh, by watering the garden with harvested uh, rainwater uh, coming from this tank. Um, this is a, also a good um, opportunity in case of a water outage. We introduce also um, a plant rescue initiative. It means that we rescue plants that are sick or that people want to throw away. Um, we give them second life on our windowsills in the office or we just plant them uh, in the garden. And looking after plants um, gives the impression of home-like office. It's, it creates a um, kind of special connection between the workplace and the employees. Uh, we created our garden from scratch by ourselves. So uh, we don't hire a gardener. We don't need them. Um, step by step, our employees started bringing new plants, uh, digging in the garden, using the shovel, making their hands dirty in soil. Um, and as you can see in the first picture, we even rejuvenate trees um, on our own. We love how gardening uh, integrates people and we really recommend it to you. So now let's move on to the second category, corporate social responsibility. Uh, it covers a quite broad spectrum of aspects. Um, for us, this is a management strategy that uh, focuses on social interest. Uh, it's also about improving your work efficiency uh, using modern technologies. And this is exactly what we do on a daily basis. 
But let me start with um, telling you something more about our charity activities. Uh, it's always a good time to give, so we don't wait. In the world full of um, indifference, where everyone is focused and attached on um, their mobiles, uh, our employees always think uh, about those in need. That's why we collect plastic caps for disabled children, and we organize clothing fundraisers uh, for newborns in need. And every Christmas uh, if in our office is focused around buying presents for children in orphanages. Uh, then we pack them uh, together with our families in the office. Um, we decorate gingerbreads, create some Christmas cards. Uh, in an effort to support pupils uh, from orphanages, we also give them an opportunity to have an internship at VGT just to start a new life. We hold our pride in blurring boundaries uh, between um, home and work because we believe that uh, keeping the work-life balance improves your efficiency. Therefore, um, at VGD, it is not a problem to take a child with you to work, especially during the pandemic where all schools are closed and people have problems because they don't know what to do with their children and they are torn between looking for a babysitter or um, taking a day off. At VGD they don't have this problem uh, because we created a corporate kindergarten or school. Um, it's a separate room for children and they are safe there, they are looked after. Uh, our office is also pet friendly and I mean more like dog friendly because uh, till now we had only dogs in our office but in the future who knows. And I can tell you that uh, dogs really foster communication and integration. Uh, they even reduce stress because they are simply pure and funny. We also encourage our employees uh, to the healthy lifestyle. Our integration meetings always, always involve muscles. Um, our employees have benefit system cards so they can enter almost every gym in Poland. We have a fully accessible sauna in the office and uh, also lately we um, built a bicycle parking as some of our employees prefer bicycle commuting. So it also promotes healthy lifestyle. But you know, toughness is not in muscles, it is in your brain, in your heart. Um, so now let me go to the biggest thing that happened to us uh, this year. So on the 16th of November, we became signatory of Diversity Charter in Poland, coordinated by a responsible business forum. Um, we want to contribute to this beautiful idea of diversity at work. We want our voice to be heard um, and to just spread awareness of some important changes that should be still introduced in other companies in our country. Uh, diversity policy is something that we've been identified with for a long time, but just now we um, learned about this uh, great initiative. That's why we want to go beyond the wall of our office with values we believe in. So you're not interested in your gender, in your age, in your religion. Uh, it doesn't matter for us also in the recruitment process. We hire foreigners. Currently, we have six from Belarus, Ukraine, and Czech Republic. And uh, we also hire disabled people. And 2021 is going to be a year full of activities supporting diversity um, at work. So I encourage you to follow our social media to check uh, what we've planned. As I already said, the toughness is also um, in your brain. That's why we invest in development of our employees by financing of uh, professional trainings. Um, also, every human endeavor uh, must be respected at VGD. That's why all internships are paid. And this is something that is still not so obvious nowadays. Uh, we also have a secondment program. It means that uh, our employees can travel to uh, international VDT offices in other countries to learn foreign law, uh, to exchange their experience. 
We also cooperate with universities and we write articles uh, for the most popular uh, online portal for accountants, Info.pl. Rumor has it that accountants are boring. And trust me, they're not if you let them to show their passion. And we convert passion into success by combining it with uh, knowledge, with experience, also with IT. Um, and that's why we are dedicated to giving access to quality educational resources, uh, which are free of charge. That's why we organize webinars, for example, for students, entrepreneurs and professionals. We also have a series of educational posts on uh, Facebook. It's available also in English. It aims not only uh, at students, but also professionals, startups, people who want to invest in Poland, or other people who just want to learn the Polish law. We also have a blog that is updated every week. So if you want to know the latest text changes in Poland, just follow it. Our goal is to impact people through various ways. Uh, so we create online guidebooks and infographics uh, to show accounting and payroll in an accessible form. Here you can see an example of our uh, guidebooks, um, the most important ones about anti-crisis shield in Poland. Furthermore, uh, we use Saldel Smart, which automatically reads in information from a scanned invoice. Uh, it reduces time of every task. A client can just scan a document with his phone and upload it to the app. Simple and easy. And of course, it improves um, our efficiency because we don't have to type in data from a paper invoice. And here you can see our greatest child uh, of the automation process, our own software, VDD Invoicer. It's a great invoicing system, uh, especially for startups and small companies that helps you to issue invoices. It's simple, uh, user-friendly, and guarantees compliance uh, with all requirements of the legislator. Uh, we can... Um, personalize its algorithm for you. Uh, we can personalize the final product, so um, an invoice template. You can upload your logo, choose the color you want. Uh, and it was possible to create uh, this software because we have an internal IT department. That is something um, that is still not so obvious. Um, so our IT department responds to our everyday needs and creates various tools uh, very quickly. And it, it also causes uh, increase in efficiency. And now the last category, creating value for Belgian business chamber. As a matter of fact, uh, VTD creates value for Belgian business in Poland. Um, we support actively a Belgian Business Chamber and BBC Business Women Club. We sponsored some events organized by the club, especially um, the International Women's Day. Uh, we took an active role uh, in its organization as well in the organization of some workshops. Here you can see some um, graphics and marketing um, materials that we created. Um, for this event. VTD has covered also advertising of the International Women's Day in Forbes and Elle magazines. And um, an important connection between uh, us and Belgium is also Flanders Investment and Trade. Uh, this agency uh, helps Belgian companies to extend their activities to other countries. Uh, when those companies uh, come to fit, uh, they get help with accounting and payroll at VGD. In this way, we support the Belgian business to enter the Polish market. We thought that Christmas Eve could be a great opportunity to pay tribute to Belgian tradition. That's why we dressed up in Belgian colors. We cooked and ate uh, Belgian food. Here you can see some waffles, quiche and Belgian soup. We also drank Belgian beer.
And do you know the iconic Belgian characters Tintin and Snowy because they were also there with us. So finally, we made uh, two short videos, especially for uh, the BBC Award uh, 2020. But as time is closing us, I will show you only one. And the second one you can check on our YouTube channel or tomorrow on our website um, when we will be posting about this event. So thank you for your attention. And I'm not saying goodbye, but see you during networking and enjoy our video. Let me change it. Okay, Martina, thank you very much for the great presentation and great video. Nice pictures, by the way. And uh, now we'll go to the third presentation that will be Gerhard Schürmann, who will give, represent what they are doing at Stocznia, Cesarska, and how they were winning this award 2020. So, Gerhard, up to you. Thank you, Christian, and uh, thank you, BBC, for giving me the opportunity to tell a bit more about uh, our Gdansk in uh, I will uh, one sec I will share the screen also with my presentation uh, hold on one sec Um, is it all good now? Are yeah. you seeing me? Or are you seeing my? Yeah. Are you still seeing me? Or are you seeing no, my we, uh, we my just, presentation we already? See probably the screen with a uh, Remo, not the other, not the other one. Sorry. We see the screen of uh, the platform, not the presentation. Oh, uh, sorry. I need to. Uh. You can please you can uh, stop sharing and you can try share again the the right um, screen. Mm. Okay, sorry, this is not going as planned. Um, um, wait. Otherwise, we have to use the backup solution maybe with... Uh... Magda, did you get the presentation? Sorry, is this, is it? Uh... Ah, yeah, okay. Now it works. It's working. The presentation, we don't hear you anymore now. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Do you see my full presentation or with the notes? We see with the notes. Do, do you see my full presentation or with the notes? No, with, with the notes. Okay, then I'll, yeah. Okay, now we now see it should the be good, full right? presentation. It's yes, coming, yes, I it's working. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, sorry, guys, for the, sorry, everyone, for the hiccup, but. Uh, um technology have to get used to this uh okay so um yeah we'll tell you a bit more about stochna sasarska development uh and what we do on the topics that we are discussing today uh 
so our company is, we are working on a very big project, but we are a very small company. So we are actually only five people. I'm the project director and I have four other people in the office in Gdansk. And uh, we are working on basically on one project, which is the revitalization of an old shipyard in Gdansk, which you can see here in front of us, a 16 hectare site. It will be uh, altogether maybe a five, 600 million uh, euro investment. So it's a huge project. Uh, but at the moment, as I said, we are a small team, but we have a, a big engine behind us, two engines from Ghent, Belgium. We have Revive and, uh, and Alides, two real estate companies uh, from Belgium. So Alides is a 120-year-old family-owned uh, company, uh, very uh, stable uh, uh, company that are doing diverse things in real estate, offices, residential, they, they develop, they own real estate. And then on the other side, we have Revive, which is a very young, innovative company that are focusing uh, a lot on, on sustainable development uh, of, of their projects. Um, so this is the site, a beautiful old shipyard uh, close to the city center of Gdansk, a short walk only, a short walk to the central train station as well. Um, there's a great, you know, physical uh, heritage on the site. This is what you basically see there. A lot of old, beautiful shipyard buildings, um, beautiful details. Um, and um, yeah, so it's large scale. There's a lot of industrial heritage. Uh, some buildings are still occupied. So we the owner, so we are the manager of the site as well. Next that we are developing our plan. So we are managing this property with some tenants and some vacant buildings we have. And this is, you know, this is what we see as our challenge looking forward uh, to 10, 15 years of development to turn this into, to turn this into a new neighborhood of Gdansk, uh, to revitalize the old shipyard uh, and to turn it into a mixed use urban uh, neighborhood, combining the old with the new. Uh, getting a bit more into the topic of today, um, here you see some of the points that we consider as kind of a, uh, as part of this sustainability chapter. So it's the reuse of existing buildings. It's this idea of not uh, uh, using greenfield development outside the city, uh, but to use uh, uh, existing sites within the city centers that are already connected to infrastructure. So promoting also public transportation and pedestrian access to the site. Uh, we have to remediate the site. So there's a lot of pollution that we have to take care of. Uh, there's also the social component where we say, okay, there's a tight residential market and we have to offer to all kinds of different target groups, uh, residential, uh, residential offerings. We are talking about bringing public use, public functions to the site. Uh, and this third point is about really engaging actually the community at, a, at, a, at an early stage uh, to develop kind of together and to get their input on our plans. Uh, on the physical side, you know, call it community benefits. There is the, the creation of public spaces. So not only private uh, real estate, but a lot of public space, uh, plazas, a beautiful waterfront promenade. Uh, we have a marina at the moment. Um, so let me pause here for a sec and 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 take a step back and and remember that this this area where we are the owners this has a this has a, this is a site with a with a great history and a great legacy. Uh, this is the this is the birthplace of Solidarnosc. So. Um, so when we are actually talking about you know corporate social responsibility, it kind of naturally already comes from the legacy of this place because it was all around, you know, taking care of each other. Uh, so this is what we what this is what we remember and what we you know are inspired by. Um, you know, based on this legacy, we started writing this manifesto, the full manifesto. You will you will find on our on our website. Uh, but this is only the short intro to that. Uh, so we really feel that we are now taking, you know, taking part in this in this new chapter and building on top of this of of this legacy, standing on on the shoulders of giants, as we call it. Um, and as today, you know, this social responsibility for us really revolves around uh, engaging with the local community. So it's about the citizens of, the, of, of Gdansk and Tri-City, the non-profits, the NGOs, the cultural institutions, artists, and also local entrepreneurs. Uh, people are coming to the site for all kinds of, you know, activities. Uh, 
it's it's really becoming an Instagram uh, hotspot as well. Um, uh, people tend to, you know, love this place. You, I mean, almost literally love it, as you can see in this slide. Um, we really try to leverage the qualities of the area. Now we are on the waterfront side, so we have an extensive waterfront. So we work with local entrepreneurs to create activities uh, that really leverage these qualities. Uh, culture was always a big part, you know, the shipyard was not only a place of production, it was basically kind of a city within the city, so culture was always a big component in the shipyard and we tried to build on top of that tradition. So one of the buildings we gave to a group of artists and they have created their own uh, space there with ateliers, with exhibitions, with with all kinds of activities. Um, and this actually you now kind of spins off into, into more, uh, into more uh, activities. We get other cultural institutions interested in this place, organizing all kinds of events uh, on our site, bringing more people to the area. Uh, another example, uh, this is a very interesting one, I think. Uh, we have three cranes, three industrial cranes on our site. And one we decided to open to the public as a 360 degrees viewpoint over the shipyard and over the city. And we started working with a with a foundation. The guy on the right is the president of a foundation that is looking after people in need. And we gave them this crane for them to manage. And, uh, and the tickets that they sell, um, the income of this, of this, of these tickets, uh, is going, uh, purely to their foundation, uh, to help them support their activities. It's been hugely popular. Uh, we doubled the number of visitors in this year, uh, even in, in this difficult, uh, pandemic time, we still had a way to manage actually this crane and to bring people there. Of course, this picture, as you see here, is not from from this year, but from uh, from previous years. But still, this year we had a lot of a lot of visitors, uh, and you know, uh, they socially safe foundation actually decided to give five thousand slotty back to us, meaning that we could decide uh, where to spend uh, where to spend this, uh, and uh, it was used actually it's being used at the moment to to provide care packages to old shipyard workers uh, in, uh, in, in Gdansk. Uh, so so th this is how we give back. Uh, a bit more about the legacy, the history. We, we, we see this kind of, you know, walking in the footsteps of the shipyard workers. You know, younger generations are getting themselves acquainted with the history of this place. Tours are being organized uh, around the site, but there's also a way to self-guide you through the site. So we created a whole 13-panel uh, uh, historic walking route throughout the area. So that brings a lot of people uh, to the site. And especially, of course, in this time of pandemic, uh, it's very good to go on our website and actually do the virtual tour, where there's even open the opportunity to go inside buildings, which are basically closed off to the public right now because they are let's say not safe, they're not being used, uh, but uh, in the virtual tour, you can actually enter. One building uh, we were able to open uh, for some time, uh, and uh, we have one special building where one of the Solidarnosc legends, uh, Mrs. Anna Valentinovich, she was operating a crane in this building. And we started working with uh, a historical institution, EPN, to, to, to bring, uh, to bring uh, an exhibition about her life to this very building. So you have the opportunity to visit the building and to see the actual crane in the building uh, that she was operating back then. Uh, so this brought like uh, over two months time, uh, only two months time, it brought 11,000 people to the site. Uh, so a lot of interest. And actually, uh, we don't only remember the legends and the, and the well-known people out of this movement, but we also try to remember the, let's say, unsung heroes, the, 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 the normal shipyard workers. And we co-sponsored a documentary called uh, Shipyard Workers, People from the Background, which re really tells the story about these people that were just doing their, 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 uh, their daily job there, but at the same time, they were part of this movement uh, of, of Solidarnosc. So we sponsored uh, that movie and we also uh, created a cinema room uh, uh, on the site. And we continue to cooperation with the documentary maker, which you see on the right. And there's now also an online archive, uh, archive uh, which, which gives more uh, movies from these, uh, from these shipyard workers. 
this is actually a, a, an, a, an activity that we did uh, uh, remembering that we have still shipyard workers on our site and neighboring shipyards. So this was a day to, you know, just have a nice barbecue together with them. Then, of course, yeah, COVID hit, uh, as everybody know, we took care of old shipyard workers, bringing them food. Uh, as they were for them, it was difficult to go to the to the grocery store. Um, this picture is from previous years when we when we organized together with the Socially Safe Foundation uh, a Christmas uh, dinner for homeless people. Uh, but of course, uh, this year we could not org organize it as you see in this picture. So uh, what we did, we we we, we prepared care packages, uh, and th those will be delivered uh, to the homeless people. Uh, just a few weeks or days ago, actually, uh, uh, we we had uh, we had uh, Saint Nicholas kind of visiting our site. And uh, we asked uh, the public through social media um, if they could uh, tell us which uh, foundations we should support that are focusing on children in need. Uh, and uh, we had like 60,000 views on our post and 1,200 comments with people giving us suggestions on who we should uh, give the donation to. Uh, in the end, we decided for two uh, different foundations. Um, so that that was also a nice initiative around this, you know, Christmas time. Let me just uh, touch upon the sustainability development for for a few more slides, uh, and then I'm basically through. Uh, we started the revitalization of the shipyard uh, with the first project. Uh, remember this picture, right? The building in the background is the Direxia building. This is the first project that we uh, finished this year, the refurbishment. Uh, in uh, September of this year, we opened uh, the building. It's basically the most important historic building on the site because this used to be the management building uh, in the shipyard. So the directors and the whole management of the shipyard was located uh, was located here. In terms of sustainability, we 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 you know we want to acknowledge to remember that this is a second life for the 150 year old building. Uh, so this is also very much part of, you know, being sustainable. Uh, it's a beautiful building. It has a lot of details that we took took care of. Um, complicated project. We created uh, social spaces in the building for people to use as a tenant, but also for people outside uh, to come to the building and rent spaces inside the Direxia building. Uh, looking forward to the next project, the fire station building. Uh, this is now actually under construction, so we, the refurbishment is going on and we will make gastronomy, so we turn the fire station into a place for gastronomy. Um, so that is that is uh, coming online hopefully still next season, um, so quite excited about that. And just to close off with a few kind of summary remarks, kind of, you know, uh, closing remarks. Uh, about corporate social responsibility. I think if you've seen uh, in the previous slides that it comes kind of natural because we work on this placemaking uh, component. Important for us that this is also just a business point that we need to bring people to the site to make people aware of the location, a location that used to be close to the public. So uh, placemaking is not only to, you know, to be nice, but also to kind of, you know, think already about marketing of, of buildings on our site. Uh, so it, it comes kind of naturally to us. Uh, then the second point is what I touched upon, Solidarnosc. You know, it kind of is ingrained in the history of this place that we do this. Uh, the, the, the third point is, is it's in our DNA. Uh, Revive is what is called the B Corp certified company. And uh, I will not dwell on that. Look it up if you have time. B Corp Certified is basically not only looking at profit, but also looking at purpose. Uh, Revive was the first B Corp Certified company in Belgium. Uh, so it's basically in the DNA that we do this. And of course, the last point, yes, it is also obvious that we do this also simply uh, for ordinary PR reasons. Uh, sustainability, sustainable development. Um, yeah, we do brownfields and not greenfield, right? So we don't build outside uh, of the city using of scarce greenfield uh, areas. We do it inside the city. We want to do mixed use, mixed income. Uh, in that sense, make it also for everybody accessible. Creating density. Uh, this has a bit to do with the first point, right? You you build where you already have uh, infrastructure in place, uh, where there is also a tight tight market. 
the revitalization of existing buildings. It's you've seen a lot of that. Uh, it's it's part of sustainability. We have a long term perspective, so we are not a hit and run developer. Uh, we are owners. We are managers. Uh, so we have a 10, 15 year perspective on this on this area. And there is this part of the joint venture where, the, where I think if you want to do sustainable development on the one hand, you need to be you know, a solid company that can do these investments and can have, can have a long-term perspective. But on the other hand, you also have to be innovative to come with new solutions. And I think that is very much in the revive uh, component. Um, so yeah, that is, that is basically my story. Uh, of course, you know, come to our crane, uh, visit Gdansk, uh, visit the shipyard. Uh, so go outside only the city center, but come also to the shipyard. Uh, it's open, uh, for everyone. And, uh, okay, that's that. And I want to thank you all for, for listening and uh, looking forward to okay, talking Thank you more very much, Gerard, Thanks for, everyone. This, uh, for sharing these insights on the great initiative and also great presentation with nice pictures. Uh, I will now invite you to the to the panel discussion. Unfortunately, my Gorzata from CFA will not be able to join us. And from uh, VGD, it will be Michaela Martinek who is going to join us. So, Michaela, welcome. Michaela? Michaela, you can turn on your camera microphone on uh, down below when there's a panel control. There seems to be a problem. Maybe uh, I can already start with you, Gerrit. I have a couple of uh, general questions, but I have also one question uh, particularly for you. And maybe I can start with this one. So uh, the tagline of the Imperial Shipyard Project is, is a place worth its history sure. where new stories will be written. Why are you involved in this kind of activities and what kind of new stories do you intend to write in terms of CSR and sustainable development? Yeah, well, uh, thank, thank you, uh, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, it's our, it's our, uh, it's our tag, it's our, uh, it's, our it's our tagline. Um, new stories, I think, in in uh, in in Polish, it's like Nova Historia. It's like a bit more display mm -hmm. with 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 stories and history. That's that's how we came up with this kind of you know playing with. Okay, it's history, but it's also new. So so that's where the where the hashtag is coming from. And why are we involved? Well, I think on that part, I think I don't want to repeat uh, a lot of what I've said in my presentation in there that kind of touches upon why we are involved in these kind of activities. There's maybe one kind of thing that I would like to add to that. Uh, it's a quote from a great Danish architect and urbanist, Jan Gale, and he's, he's using this, this phrase, mm -hmm. first life, then spaces, and then buildings. So we believe that you first have to create this life. So it's about engaging the community, right. and then it's about the spaces, and and only then the buildings come. So so that is how we that is that is why we do a lot of these activities. And if you're then asking me about the second part, because I think that's the more interesting, and maybe people didn't hear hear about this already, uh, not yet uh, so far. So this is about so looking forward. What are we imagining to do more? Uh, it was interesting to hear also in in, in the previous speakers about this. Uh, B hotel and, and, and the gardening. Uh, we are actually uh, at the moment preparing uh, with some students from the Fine Arts Academy uh, a community garden. Uh, so we have mm -hmm. a, a plot on our side where we want to create this community garden. Uh, so that's one other thing that is that is coming up. Uh, uh, the other thing is that the Socially Safe Foundation, who's managing the crane, uh, will extend their mm -hmm. activities. They're going to grow. They're going to uh, they're going to extend their opening hours. They're going to provide other services uh, around uh, the crane. Uh, 
Uh, so um, then I think what is also interesting is that we started working with a young group of people uh, that are in this kind of, we call this makers uh, space. So they are uh, creative people, um, but in a physical way. So they do welding, they do woodworking, uh, maybe even clothing, uh, making clothes. So we gave them a building on our site uh, and they are starting now to prepare the first events uh, and then mm -hmm. also, you know, attracting uh, attracting mm -hmm. younger generation again uh, to, to the site. Uh, and we continue, I think the other part is that we continue building a relationship with more NGOs uh, on our site. Uh, we have, uh, we are, you know, continuously working with NGOs, but this group is basically expanding always. So that is, I think, also what will happen in the next year in 2021, that we will uh, grow uh, this engagement with with nonprofits and and NGOs. So that is, I think, uh, my 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 answer to the question of okay. about what is what, good. what are the new I got stories here on coming the up. General yeah. chat uh, from Monica something in here that she says it's good to hear that. I have many questions connected to this subject. So maybe you can connect further afterwards with Monica Mazurowska, and she has many questions for you on this subject. Okay, but now we're going to continue with our uh, panel discussion. Okay, so, great, great. Well, Michaela, yeah. welcome. There were some uh, technical difficulties to join. Uh, yeah. But well, welcome to the panel. So I will now have a general question for both of you. And the first one is uh, very general, but why do you believe that CSR and sustainable development is the right way to think about business? Michaela, maybe you start since you didn't talk yet so far. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I apologize for the technical problems and the second technical problem is probably jumping around. This is our youngest member of our pet team. Welcome. This. So you can really see that we are a pet friendly company and they sometimes they reduce the stress, not always. Hey. <laughs> so um, I really believe that entrepreneurs uh, who wants to expand the company have to first start inside of the company. For VGD, as Martina during her presentation said, for us it's the human resource. Um, our people are very important for us. So we offer only paid internships. Um, we use our internal system to, cooper, uh, to compare the uh, salaries and as a well job position of our employees. So we know mm -hmm. how they are growing with their experiences and knowledges. Um, and always our doors were open to all nations, gender, religion, and sexual orientation. Thus, all our employee, employees can feel uh, equal and appreciated. Um, without a strong team and healthy internal relations, there's no possibility to build strong and healthy company. Uh, the same attitude we apply to, to the environment. So maybe our company is not the biggest, but we believe that we are able to reduce our uh, carbon footprint. So if the company's social responsibility and sustainable development should be the value of each company. Great. Uh, you have something to add to that, Gerhard, uh, from your side? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's 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 a bit yeah specific uh, for us because we are a real estate company, and uh, to this question, uh, well, you have to understand that real estate and construction is a business. Uh, well, the, the CFE is not here anymore, but they can I think acknowledge this. It's real estate and construction is a business that is not. Uh, usually tends not to be super in, not to be super innovative compared to other sectors uh, in industry mm -hmm. but on the other hand they, they have a big impact on the environment uh, carbon footprint you tends to be very high uh, and so we believe that you know sustainable development uh, is very important when you are a real estate company uh, this sector is lagging uh, other sectors uh, so we have to do our best to really drive drive change here that is one I want to add. And uh, the other thing is I touched upon this a bit, but we are not a hit and run developer. So we have this long-term perspective. This is also, you know, this is, I think, part of being sustainable. Uh, we have to build up a reputation as a responsible party. Uh, our project in Gdansk has maybe a bit less favorable history because there was a lot of speculation mm -hmm. uh, going on before we came. Uh, investors came and went. 
they speculated, they, 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 they broke up the site in bits and pieces, start demolishing uh, parts of the site, selling off parts, and then leaving again without real investment. So for us, it's really also to show that we are you know, here for the long run. Uh, so that is, I think, uh, another uh, component uh, that, okay. I, that I would Perfect. like to add. And uh, the I second think, question yeah, I have we'll for both of for you is yeah. about uh, the impact, of course, of COVID-19 and how, what you do to reduce this impact for your employees. Uh, maybe this time, Gerard, you can start. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very important question, Claude, because I, what I mentioned before, we are not only a developer or investor, we are also owner and property management manager. So, uh, uh, and especially for the Direxia building that we just reopened after refurbishment uh, in the middle of the pandemic, you know, in September of this year, uh, we opened that building. And uh, again, we are only a very small team, but we are taking care of this whole property management part as well. And we introduced sanitary regime in the building, uh, of course, for our own team, but for the whole building, for all our tenants. Uh, there are instructions uh, everywhere in the building about uh, uh, maximum number of people in certain common areas. We have a device uh, in the in the entrance area that can measure your mm -hmm. temperature, and at the same time uh, you can sanitize your hands. Uh, so that is that is that is of course leading by example for the team. You know we really follow up these instructions and also tell to people when they are not uh, doing that. Uh, one other part, which has nothing to, nothing to do with the property management, but you saw in some of the slides right. that we delivered groceries uh, mm -hmm. right to some older people uh, in Gdansk uh, that are not, you know, that are afraid to go out and and do this kind of shopping. So uh, we help them uh, with that. So I think these okay. are important Thanks points for us Michaela, uh, from your side? in this in this COVID time. I agree yeah. with Gerard. It's very important to. Um, prepare all the sanitary uh, instructions for all visitors and employees uh, as well. We did that. Uh, in fact, I gave the home office on the beginning of uh, March before all the craziness really started, uh, as I saw it uh, coming from other countries. Uh, actually, now uh, our old teams are split to uh, departments are split to two teams and they alternate uh, one week home office and one week office. So then there are not so many people in the office. Anyway, our mm -hmm. office is huge. So they really uh, are spread around. Um, we had through, through, through this whole pandemic only one positive tested uh, employee who got it from the family member. Luckily, that was the week when the person was on the home office, so then continued another two weeks of our home office. So we were able to uh, stop the spread of the, of the COVID in the, in the uh, office. Uh, luckily as well for us, uh, for already several years, our employees uh, uh, are able to organize their time management. Mm -hmm. Uh, or now, uh, as well, they can came, uh, take their kids to this little kindergarten we have for them. So the impact of the government restrictions when they close the schools and preschools were really negligible for them. Okay, very good. I have also another question for you. What are your future ideas on CSR and on sustainable development uh, for the future? Uh, for the CRR, uh, we are continuing, uh, planning to continue the cooperation with the Warsaw Orphanage. Uh, the older populace can have the first employment experience in our office. Mm -hmm. uh, as we are the signatory of Diversity Charter, we will organize regularly the trainings and conferences uh, for the topics. And not to forget about uh, our people, we would like to as well continue the VGD International Secondment Program. We have applied, as Martina presented, many different solutions to reduce the carbon footprint in our office. Um, we, what she didn't say, we already filtered the water, use the filter for the water, we don't use the bottled water, and as well we make the purchases locally. So we are not ordering from half mm -hmm. as other side of Warsaw or other side of Poland. So we try to stay on the Villano and this area. Uh, as we moved recently to the new building, so we have really big opportunities to, to continue as well our sustainable development. We started with the garden 
uh, now we are focusing on the energy uh, class of the building to see if all windows are really uh, strong, uh, how we use water, gas and electricity. And we start to look for the possibilities to install the solar panels on the roof of the building. Uh, further, we would like to continue the digitalization to print less. And mm -hmm. um, we would like to build a composter in our garden so we can use it as a natural fertilizer in the future. Uh, as well, we support uh, the uh, bike riding of our employees to the mm -hmm. office instead of uh, uh, using the car. Uh, we have the showers in the office. We have the special parking for the, for the bicycles. And we have one electric bike from Zen, the Belgian company and member of the BBC, which we can use for the local shopping and visit at the city hall or the um, uh, post office as well. I use it for the meetings with uh, members of board the BBC and other clients. Um, we as well don't throw out the electronics. We don't utilize them just easily. We try to give them the second life by repairing, upgrading, or then if it's not for any use for us, we give it to people in the needs. Uh, we prepared a special box for the electronic waste and batteries for our employees. So that if they don't know how to um, dispose it, they can just bring it to the, to the office and we utilize them correctly. And next year, we would like to volunteer in cleaning of the forest, especially the clean, cl closest to us, which is Pofshin. And we like to use it for the team building games. Um, we switched to eco uh, corporate equipment. So everything is from recycled uh, paper, um, our pens, bags, and uh, pencils. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the last several years, you can receive only electronic Christmas cards from us. Okay. And I really say that VGD would like to lead the example to the same size <laughs> uh, companies. Great. Well, I hope that all your ideas will inspire others to follow. I think it's a lot of great ideas. Is any one of you still wants to add something to uh, or have something to, to say still before we close the panel discussion? Then I would like to thank you for your cooperation. Thank you also for the great presentations. And one more time, congratulate you with the uh, winning the award. I believe it's well deserved, and I hope everybody can join me in uh, in, in saying that it's well deserved. Uh, we're gonna go now also to the draw of some prizes. So I would like to thank you also for your prizes that you are going to give. And uh, this is something I think I will do together with uh, Magda. And of course, maybe you can stick around to tell a little bit more about your price. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, Magda joined us here. So yes. I don't know how the draw is going to happen. Now you have a big, big pot there. And of yes, course. I have a big lottery jar. Okay. So, so uh, uh, the first one is gift packages for, uh, from CFA. So CFA is not here anymore. So let's just draw it. But maybe then Gerhard and Michaela can stick here to say a little bit more about their price. Okay. Here it comes. Okay, so I'm very pleased that uh, this prize goes to Mrs. Beata Henry Lanoui. Okay, congratulations. The second prize comes from Vigidi Polska and it's also Christmas gift packages. Maybe, Michaela, you want to say a few more words what they can expect before the draw comes? As the situation with COVID is not getting better and we all use the masks not only inside of the offices but as well outside so we um have prepared the one of the present is the beautiful logo as well if you are uh, should be warm on your face should be warm on your feet so there are some funny uh, pair of socks and to make the especially christmas time nice and cozy um the the winner of the of our prize will receive some um, uh, really good tea and chocolate Okay, great. Okay, so let's have a draw now. Who is going to win this one? So this prize goes to Mr. Wojciech Konfarowicz, POC Partners. 
Okay, great. Congratulations. And now we go to uh, Gerard Price from Stochiatze Zaska. And this is a voucher for a guided visit on the Imperial Shipyard. So maybe you can also a little bit explain more what they can all expect from that. Yeah, so what you saw in my presentation is that we have uh, a whole route on our sites, uh, which you can, of course, uh, go anytime, any day yourself and, and be guided by the panels. But the nice thing is that we have, we have a cooperation with the Historic Maritime Foundation. And there's a guy there, Mrs. Juravinsky, who knows really a lot about the history of the shipyard. Uh, and he will uh, go with the prize winner uh, through the site and uh, do the guided tour together so you will get all the insights about uh, the history uh, of 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 this uh, of this beautiful place and you also have the chance to go up the crane uh, as you saw in the in the presentation and 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 have the view on the on the shipyard sounds and, very and, exciting and so, so who's going to win that one offer. yeah so this very nice price goes to mrs justyna nieciecka bente paribas real estate okay Congratulations. And now you might think that maybe all the prizes are given, but I have a little extra surprise for you. So for people who don't know me yet, I am a senior associate of Management Center Europe, a company based in Brussels, active in the whole of Europe, and now also trying to be more active in Poland and a BBC member. Uh, it's also a daughter company of American Management Association. And uh, I convinced them to give a prize for this uh, event. And it's a, a voucher for one person for the mini MBA course. And the mini MBA course is our most successful course. It is over six days and it is really going over all the elements of the business. So you will talk about leadership, strategy, marketing and sales, finance and also change management. All this in six days with also simulation, with a personal assessment and everything. So a very interesting price. If you look at the website of MCE, you will find more information. It's worth 4,000 euros. So I think uh, the person who wins this should be very happy. And the winner is... And the winner is... Mr. Krzysztof Kalata Praxeo. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Krzysztof. <laughs> right. Uh, but Krzysztof is, I think, I don't know if he's giving himself even mini MBA. Yeah, so, so I so. propose to uh, do it once again. I think so. I think so. Because uh, he's a colleague of mine also. Too. <laughs> it's and engage us as well in MC. Yeah, he can also go for free to be the MBA anyway. Okay. <laughs> so... the second package, Magda, to Krzysztof. I will. So uh, the winner of this award is Ulrich Schwedemann. Sorry for the wrong pronunciation, probably. A director of the Swiss Chamber. Okay. Congratulations. And hope to see you soon. I'm also myself delivering this mini MBA. I mean, most of the time, the first part of leadership, uh, strategy, and sales and marketing. Uh, and uh, I must say, uh, online, it's just for it's for an online uh, one, so it will be can be in the next months. And online, it is also already shown to be very effective. Of course, face to face is sometimes even better, but online it also shows to be very effective. So I would like to thank everyone for the active participation. Uh, the, during the panel, the great presentations. It was a pleasure for me to uh, moderate this event. And don't forget now to stick around for the networking. Uh, maybe I will also jump from one table to the other to also get to know you a little bit better. Uh, Magda, I give the word maybe back to you for closing before we go to the networking. Uh, yes, so I would like to thank you all. Uh, thank you for your presentation, for your time, that you share your experience with us, with other uh, BBC members. And uh, let's start the networking part. <laughs>